Hello. It's hot as balls in Oregon, so we have decided to come down into the garage where it's marginally cooler than upstairs in the house and work on a bike project. Hooray! Now I'm putting you on the tripod. So we're going to start off by measuring the bikes and then obviously reading the instructions. I'll put a link to this kit uh, in the description. So we're figuring out how far it is from the back of the seat to the handlebars and then accounting for um, the wheel so it doesn't hit the wall. And these brackets are have holes in them for whether that you're going down the same floor joist like I'm doing here or going 90 degrees to the floor joist which I'll be doing on the second bike you see. Uh, pretty straightforward and then um, threading it here. I'm obviously am not doing it correctly so Bailey takes over and gets it to go correctly and we're going to use a hammer drill and then uh, use blue Tapcon screws. I kind of felt like I was a marionette here. Um, Pre-drill them and then drive them in with the impact driver. This cleat here. So put the hooks on the handlebars and the back of the seat and you can see she can lift it up pretty easily. There's trim, MDF trim, which I hate, so I just got a saw out and cut it off that was in the way. And as you can see, I don't fit under there. It's not a problem for me! <laughs> Now we're going to work on my bike, which is significantly bigger. This thing is a beast. Um, plus, we're going to move all this junk that's in the way. And like I said, this is going to go... Each bracket is going to be on its own floor joist. So 90 degrees to Bailey's bike there. I'm not necessarily concerned about the distance between the handlebars and the seat, but more concerned about how far apart the floor joists are. This time I've figured out how to thread it, and we hook it up and hoist it in the air. When we pre-threaded uh, pulleys, probably should have had it more even because it really pulls on the back of the bike first before it starts to raise the front and up and ta-da! So this is what I ended up with. I cut this at 20 degrees, which I measured from the pedal. And then because the pedal and the crank are 90 degrees to each other, I had to cut that to make it 90 to this angle. This angle is 90 to that angle. And then I got some oak, not very thick, glued and screwed that on there for the pedal clip and then countersunk some holes on a piece of plywood, which I glued and screwed through the back, those holes. And then I beveled the plywood as well, just to kind of give it a good look. Plus I like the exposed plywood and the blue stain on there. Um, I did a couple projects like this. Um, I'll link those here. Uh, some coffee tables and an etage. Another client saw the coffee table video and really liked the blue and exposed plywood. So, I like it too. 
So that's kind of the jig to hold the pedal. And now let's go mount it on the wall and I'll show you how all that works. So I want this up off the wall a little bit. So I can put this cart I have under there. So I kind of marked where I want it. Okay, here's the level collection. Tires will sit on this. And got a mark where that's going to go. You want to measure how high up your pedal goes. And also, that's on a stud. Kind of important to make sure you hit studs. So I installed some blocking next to the stud so you can kind of uh, get some extra support because I do have access back there. And so I've got my two little ledgers and a place for my pedal. Put the wheels up there. Clips right in. And that's how you deal with a bike without a kickstand. Plus, it looks kind of cool. All the motorcycle gear and everything over there. So here it is with the cart. Kind of what I designed the bike to fit over. And then let me show you the blocking I did. So it's in the stud here. Here's the blocking. I don't know how well you can see that. And then I'm going to drive one more long screw in through the back just to keep that thing on the wall because I like it. So here's the other bike storage. We've got Bailey's Gypsy painted Alexa and my cargo bike with champagne crate on the back. And then this bike, uh, we're gonna restore at some point. It's a 1957 Schwinn Corvette. And I think it's all original except the pedals and obviously the basket they added to the front. And haven't done any research yet. The seat might be new, might be mid 60s Schwinn. But anyway, that's a project. But right now it's rustacular and uh, on display. So this is how we did bike storage, uh, using the pulley system for the big bikes and a wall cleat for the tiny bike without a kickstand. And it looks really good displayed like that.